Greetings, brothers and sisters. So this is an old video. The person posted this on YouTube from three weeks ago. So Kanye West was banned from uh, Instagool, you know, some time after that. I'm not sure this is a, a video posted on Instagool or some other social media. I don't know what it is. It looks like an Instagool video. But he's disappeared since then. And it's a very telling, you know, there's a very telling um, uh, information in this thing given the nature of everything that's going on in the world and, you know, specifically with him and this idea of um, a psychiatric hold and reprogramming centers. Let's start off here and I'll come back to that in a moment. So this is the issue I had with Act 3 of the documentary. When I was having a normal business meeting, Cootie says, oh, I got to turn the camera off. So it was set up from Act 1 to, to 3. I had two of my people editing uh, editing the documentary after I went up and demanded that I'm able to get final cut. They did not want to change this narrative. There's an underlying tone in the documentary amidst all of the showing like how confident I am to say in a business meeting that he wanted to turn the camera off. This dude is talking about he's so Christian. Christians are pro-life, just, just open the Bible. That's When I talked about that, he turned the camera off and I was talking to this meeting, uh, talking in the meeting with some business people that he was trying to do business with. He turned the camera off on these parts. Like, look, if you're so much my friend, you know, then why would you even air something that you had to turn the camera off? Another thing is. Yeah. So uh, let me address this. I said the very same thing. I think I said it in the video for you. For those of you guys remember me talking about the documentary, which mostly portrayed Kanye in a good light. But when it came to the end of the the documentary, there was this moment where Kanye was, you know, this is when he was running for president. And, you know, it was he ran for president. It was epic in Kanye fashion. He got up on stage with a bulletproof vest, and he, he said that his dad wanted to abort him. And then he talked about his eldest child, North, his daughter, who... He wanted to abort, and Kim wouldn't get an abortion, right? And he was weeping, and, you know, it ended up being the beginning of what's now their divorce, right? I mean, this is him running for president. He had one event, right? And there was an epic event, and then there was an exchange on Twitter between him and and Kim, and then, you know, his um, he got into it with his uh, uh, with Kim's mom, Chris Kardashian, and he said that Chris Kardashian, among other things, there were a lot of big reveal, was the one that pushed for Kim to release that um, sex tape that led to the you know fame and fortunes for the Kardashians. That Chris pushed her to to allow that sex tape to be leaked because you know it did. I mean, she was a visionary, right? And he accused her of pimping out her daughter. And without that sex tape, they don't you know do what they're doing now, right? And so from his insider knowledge, that's what he understood to be the truth, at least what he said. And so, um, or she released it without Kim even, no, I don't know what it was. So, but he, there was a bunch of big reveals and then he settled down. Like, you know, he goes and he goes uh, full Kanye and then settles down and has to go to one of these reprogramming centers, which is what's happening now, right? And so he was in this meeting with these people um, about, you know, running for president, and he talked about abortion. And this guy, Cootie, who is supposed to be a Christian, he talks about being a Christian and prays, you know, in different times during the documentary. And he said, I can't, see, I can't uh, stand seeing my friend like this, so he turned off the camera, which made it way worse, right? Don't show the whole clip, like Kanye just said. If you're his friend, don't show him a clip that you think is embarrassing but you make it way worse by, you know, saying you have to turn the camera off, right? That you're, you know, embarrassed for him. Like you're you're making it bad by doing that. Um, and, you know, if you're a Christian, you are against abortion. I mean, some Christians aren't, but, you know, if you believe life begins at conception, which I do, you know, I'm not a Christian, but that's my understanding because of the heartfulness meditation on a spiritual level, and then on a physical level, that there's human life begins at conception. That's the start, right? You know, like in anything, uh, um, in a mammal, any any kind of, on a scientific level, 
when there is when the egg and the sperm comes together in the mammalian process, that's when you know these cells start to split. That's the beginning of life, right? So that's you know I, I think that's you know standard definition, right? And so if you believe that and you believe in a soul, then you know you believe abortion's murder, which is not some uh, you know fringe level way of thinking. Just for Hollywood celebrities and you know people in the media, sure, right? These you know, left wing people. But everybody else, you know, the majority of Americans, it's something where if you really think about it, you would say, yeah, you know, that makes sense. What Kanye was saying makes sense. Certainly with all the other crazy things that Kanye said, some of the bragging that he did, like he's very, you know, he brags a lot. And there's things that are way more embarrassing, would be way more embarrassing for me than what Kanye said. I mean, the the thing at the end isn't embarrassing at all. And so... We know that Netflix does that. They portray people in a way that, you know, he's going to get into this here. I didn't know about the 30 million. And when that came up, I brought this to one of my friends and all that he brought up was, man, I remember when when Cootie had fake $20 bills. And so there are some things positive. I respect that we put it out. I think it's a beautiful documentary, but there was an undertone, that intrinsic undertone is that of control, but it's something that at any given moment, boom, boom, we could point to that and we could say that, don't listen to him, he's crazy. That's the reason why there's never been a magazine cover that said, oh, yay, richest black man of all time, because you gotta only. See, um, he's a billionaire, it was like worth 1.4 billion. And you know, I don't know if he's the richest black man of all time, but you know, he's a billionaire. And so that makes sense, right? Because he's been successful on four levels, five levels. You know, he he made beats. That's how he guys started. He made, you know, beats for other rappers. Then he became a rapper himself and a producer. And then he launched a clothing line. And then he um, became a preacher. And he was successful in all these levels, right? And he was $50 million in debt for a while when I first started to cover him. And now he's a billionaire. And so, you know, uh, uh, and he's like like 1.4, 1.5, something like that, right? Substantially successful. And he just said that this guy made $30 million off of this documentary. And they portray you in a certain way. I just covered um, The Bad Vegan. And, you know, the way The Bad Vegan was cut, the guy who was the boyfriend who took the money from this successful woman who dated Alec Baldwin, all these things. I'm going to cover this in a video I put out yesterday or this morning. It will be yesterday when I'm watching, when you release this one probably. But anyways, you know, and then I went back and did further research. At the end of the the documentary, there's a conversation. It sounds like she's flirting with a guy. And, you know, she said that that was done deceptively because they wanted her to call the guy and work him for information and get more information from him. And so she had to be friendly with him, right? And they, you know, misrepresented what happened because it made it sound like she was going to go back to him after all of it. That's how they left the documentary. I was like, well, that's effed. And they pretended, they, you know, they were uh, deceptive. And, you know, Netflix was working her and she was trying to work the guy and the guy was trying to work her because she thought he was rich and getting you know, all these things. It's just all these levels of manipulation. It's so greasy, right? And that's what, you know, Netflix does in these documentaries. And they want to put out this, you know, idea that Kanye's crazy. Like, that's just the easiest way to dismiss some of the truth that he says, that he says, right? They want to, you know, if you make somebody crazy, that's what they do with the truth community. Oh, you guys are just crazy. I'll get into that more with an old uh, Warren... Uh, a Beatty movie in a second after this uh, Kanye thing. Believe black people in the camera that are controlled by the industry in general. So right now, something I thought about this morning, a, 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 a element of privilege is how am I in a position where I have to pray to see my children? I, I sent the information. I didn't get the return text. There was no reason why my children couldn't come to Sunday service. My mom, I, I was told that North was over a sleepover. 
the type of content, the people. My mom used to check every single person whose house I would go over there one by one. And so just think about this, because this is a very valid point. Because with you, as a parent, and you guys are truther, some of you guys are right-wing, whatever. But the majority of people out there who, you know, understand what Hollywood is, would you feel comfortable sending your kid to a, you know, to a California rich person's home, you know, in L.A. associated with the people like the Kardashians? I mean, even the Kardashians' home. Would you feel comfortable having your kids over there or any of these places with all these, you know, pervs and pedos? And, I mean, most of them have some sort of friendly relationship with a Satan worshiper, right? <laughs> like, I mean, you know, this is Hollywood, the whole, you know, Hollywood community. I mean, they don't live in Hollywood, but, you know, that whole whatever, rich people, California, and they're just not people that you would feel comfortable having your kids go over to their house, right? He has a totally legitimate point there. You know, so Kanye, this is before um, they banned him on Instagram. And about a week ago, there was some unofficial source saying that Kim got a private message from Kanye saying he realized he screwed up and he's going to seek help, which to me meant that he's going to go to a reprogramming center, right? And so they have these uh, treatment centers. You know, I worked in a treatment center for kids who were, you know, poorer, right? And I was involved in a, you know, I worked in a treatment center that was in Santa Fe, New Mexico, that was for, you know, rich people, semi, semi-famous people. And, you know, the ones in California that are associated with this, I mean, the psychological field, the psych, psychiatrists, you know, you have these... Um, these psych psychiatric holds they can put on people, somebody who's su suicidal or self-harming, they can just remand you to the custody of the psychiatric institution. And it's way worse in the sense of due process than the criminal justice system because it's 100% dependent on these psychiatrists who, in my experience, are all completely effed in the head. They're all messed up, manipulative, you know, psychiatrists are medical doctors, right? So if you, go to, if you go to school to be a psychologist, that's completely different. And I got my master's in counseling. So you go to college and you start taking psyche, psychiatric, psych, psychological, or counseling courses. And then you go into the counseling field. That's completely different. Or an MSW, master's in social work, that's completely different there's a separate thread or track or whatever you want to call it, right? Because one goes through the field of psychiatry or counseling or social work, and that's on one side. And you have psychiatrists who are medical doctors who then specialized in psychiatry, right? So medical profession, you have like a foot doctor, or, you know, any of these different times, uh, an optometrist, right? Whatever it might be. You can go into any you know, specific body part. And it's more about the physical workings of the body and how it relates to, in this case, the brain or your psychological makeup. Where psychologists, they're about what's going on inside of you. And they can write psych, you know, there's some levels of people who get um, degrees in psychologies, in psychology, or maybe they get a PhD. There's some people, nurses, nurse practitioner, that can write prescriptions for psychological medications. But the main pill pushers are the psychiatrists. That's what they do. They're more medical doctors who approach it from a physio physiological standpoint in terms of your you know, psychological breakdown or whatever it is, your psychological makeup. And their solution is to give you some pharmaceutical drug, and I've documented this before, where there was this article about there being 200 medications and the side effects were either suicide, suicidal ideation, you know, thoughts of suicide, or depression, right? So you think about that. Like, there's all these medications that are for psychological problems, and they cause even worse symptoms, some of the side effects, so-called side effects. And so these psychiatrists are usually arrogant. I mean, I haven't met one that wasn't. And so all the ones that I worked with or worked within the facilities I worked in they were arrogant, and their solution was always just to change the medication, change the dosage when the side effects would appear. 
And so these are the guys who run these, you know, psychological institutions, treatment centers, and psychiatric, you know, institutions where they can just, you know, they're like a godlike power to medicate you, force you to take medications. And that's part of the, you know, program to get out. And, you know, Kanye came out of these treatment centers before saying that the medication hurt his creativity. And this was something that Pete Davidson was making fun of him, right? On Saturday Night Live, because Pete Davidson, who has borderline personality disorder, among other type of psychological issues, and he is somebody that's talked about being suicidal and having, you know, his own breakdowns and his own, he's a weird dude, right? But he's considered the sane one because he takes the medication, right? And I'm not saying, you know, don't take the medication or I'm not making any recommendations, but there are, you know, real issues here, right? You know, whether you take them or not, you know, the, the, it isn't like taking them solves the problem. Like this is, you know, most people have taken some sort of psychological medication. It might help for a little bit. It might help in the beginning. I mean, there's all these things, but there's, you know, problems that result from the medication, just like with anything to do with pharmaceuticals where, you know, there's always side effects, right? And so in this case, you have Kim Kardashian who is made up of like 20 to 30% plastic. Like she's rearranged her body, which to me is a sign of mental illness, right? The level of plastic surgery she's had to enhance parts of her body, trying to solve her problems by her physical appearance. And she looks like, you know, a, a wax figure that came to life, a mannequin that came to life. She doesn't look like a, a real human being, which in itself is disturbing, the whole plastic surgery thing. And she became famous by having a sex tape published, and her dad was O.J. Simpson's lawyer. And they have the most superficial show. It's dumb. It's, you know, all of it. And she's recently, like yesterday, did a video on how she has these jeans that are made up of just threads. They're so ripped. There's no fabric in them, you know. And she's charging $6,500 for those, $400 for flip-flops, right, merching all this stuff. And taking people on a, you know, outward journey of superficiality and just all of it, right? And she's considered the sane one and the reasonable one. And Kanye says things that don't go along with the liberal agenda, don't go along with the Hollywood agenda, says things that are truths, even though he has these emotional reactions and, you know, he doesn't always say them in the best way. He's the one who's now in one of these reprogramming centers. You know, he's the identified patient. I talked about that early on in one of these Kanye videos. And there's all kinds of things. So when I get to the point where I'm like standing up on TikTok, I've done said it 10 times probably. You know what I'm saying? It's just general dad being a father, being out here by myself. Yes, yeah, celebrity, you know, person that basically everyone, you know, in my life asks for stuff. And, you know, it's, you know, it's just, I'm in a very... Uh, I'm I'm in a very uh like like quality will put it. I'm in I'm breathing thin air here. But I'm gonna use this platform and explain to you uh exactly what I and y'all know that this is what I'm dealing with. The the press they can't spin it and I'm not I'm not gonna let up until I have the control of how my black children, how my children and the content and the surroundings uh, being let have, you know, makeup and high heels and, you know, the, the just the influence on my on my boys and all that's just. Look, yeah, you wouldn't want your your boys growing up with those, you know, brats, the living brats dolls, right? <laughs> like, I mean, imagine, you know, growing up in that environment. Look at how Rob. <laughs> You know, I don't know much about Rob, but he doesn't look like he's <laughs> he's doing he's doing well, right? And so, um, this is you know what he said before he went into whatever the repro reprogramming center is. So, Kim Kardashian said that he said that he is taking responsibility and is going to seek help, and so that might have been something where the judge said we're going to take away your visitation rights because of all the things you've been saying on social media, right? We saw what happened with Brittany and her conservatorship. Now, Brittany's crazy, but her parents, are they less crazy? 
I mean, they pimped out their kids, you know, for financial gain. You know, Brittany's uh, out there saying she doesn't want to pay her mom's $600,000 in uh, legal fees. I mean, just crazy amounts of money they sucked off of her. And we know that to be, you know, documented and true that they were managing and handling her, making her perform in Las Vegas. And, you know, when she was under the conservatorship and the dad taking as much money out of it as he could, right? I mean, it's just, um, you know, this is how these corrupt judges and a corrupt system and, you know, people with uh, this liberal bias, the Hollywood bias and things, and thinking they know more and psychiatrists get involved and, you know, being able to control people without going through due process and locking them up and things like this, right? And so he might be in the position where he has to go back to a reprogramming center to see his kids, for example. Like him, you know, being out on social media and speaking truth, even if he didn't do it in the best way, you know, going full Kanye, you know, he's got his own issues. But they're around a guy, and Pete Davidson was now meeting the kids. I'll cover some of that, you know, in a bit. They're around this guy who is, you know, I mean, who would want their kids around Pete Davidson? Like anybody who's, you know, sane wouldn't. Like the guy's, you know, professes his mental illness and he's just, uh, you know, a ghoulish looking, you know, medicated and self-medicating because he takes psychological medications, but he uses drugs. You know, he talks about using pot. I mean, Louis C.K. went to uh, his boss on Saturday Night Live, Lauren Michaels, and said that Pete Davidson was smoking way too much pot. Pete Davidson went to work in his pajamas, you know, in the writer's room. And then some days he can't show up for work. Like, they have to cut him out of sketches, even though he's like the number one star in SNL right now, because there's this whole, you know, group of young men and whatever, uh, women who are following this guy, right? And, you know, he uses, um, in a, a video with Machine Gun Kelly, they're doing shrooms. So we know that he uses multiple, you know, self-medicating and taking psychological medications and being, you know, whatever he is, right, a messed up dude. You wouldn't want that around your kids, right? The age difference, all of it. Like, it's a totally reasonable, I mean, worry on Kanye's part. And here's another thing I want to tell you. I was at the house three times this week driving. I was staying two hours out of, an hour and a half out of L.A. I drove a total of six hours every day, like three days in a row to take my kids to school. And then I was in the house with Kim, putting the kids to bed, doing puzzles, doing homework with my daughter, with my children. And then, so that's a that's already creating, oh, I'm cool. I can pick my kids up. I felt energized because I couldn't even rap. I couldn't do anything after North wasn't allowed to go to Donda 2. It paralyzed me. I had, I had verses to finish. I had, you know, I, I just couldn't, it, w- it was done at that point, you know? And then, you know, I went to the DR and I came back on vacation. When I came back, I saw my children, I felt energized. So now, you know, yeah, that was a form of kryptonite that was on me. And after I saw him, I felt alive again. And then just at the drop of the dime, she can be like, okay, you don't, you don't see your kids today. And that's, I'm not playing with that. And before we go to an actual court, I'm coming to the court of public opinion, since that's where they exist after the divorce. That's where they existed. You know, and then they already had, he already lost that. Remember, they were publishing articles that Kim's taking the high road. She went on Ellen and how she was taking the high road and she would never disparage Kanye to her kids. I mean, but she's dating a guy who slammed him on Saturday Night Live, right? I mean, it's just like, and she's a horrible person. Like they're, the Kardashians are horrible people. They're just like, you know, they're pushing out filth and poison to young people, right? An obsession with your appearance. I mean, just everything that they represent is the worst, the low level, low vibration in terms of humanity. Like Kanye's an actual artist and he's made, you know, I mean, some of his music and some of his things that he, he's done are epic and he's far more interesting and you know, it has a lot more depth than any of these superficial Kardashians who, you know, at least in terms of what they present on that show and in their lives, right? And so, um, but he's the one who's the identified patient and has to go to the reprogramming center. Well, I'm not here to play about this. 
Watch this. Scrutinize this. Laura, Tracy, Chris, all y'all scrutinize this very close. I am not OJ Simpson. You're not going to win this one. <laughs> Those are not good words. He's not OJ. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get oj <laughs> you're getting oj um all right so um there's that so i watched this movie i watch these movies you know in between when my wife and i are watching tv and things um like if she goes to sleep or whatever and i'm awake like we take these naps tv naps and i might watch some of a basketball game or whatever it might be or you know there's different times that I'm alone watching TV. And so I look at like old movies. I started to watch this and I realized halfway through it that I saw this movie before. It's called The Parallax View. And it starts off and there's an assassination on a politician. And it's, you know, post when they assassinated uh, JFK and Bobby Kennedy. And they have these judges who come out like three months later. And it's a clear assassination with some sort of conspiracy behind it right this isn't a good movie but it's there's an interesting point about it and so these judges come out and they say that they um have investigated everything you know like they're doing a commission a report and it's an individual it's one disturbed individual which is what always happens they always want the lone gunman because they don't want to get to the conspiracy behind it right and so this is a a very liberal warren Beatty. So he starts investigating all this, and then he finds out there is a program in which um, there's, and he goes through this mind control test, and he takes a psychological test, which he has um, uh, some guy, he goes to some lab, and one of his friends gives it to a young sociopath to take the test because they want sociopaths, and they're building an army of assassins, right? And he's in the army of assassins, and um, like he's training to be one. But he's really a patsy because they figure out who he who he is, right? And leading up to that, there were a bunch of people that were in the tower in Seattle where the original murder, the assassination took place. And everybody who was in the room is dying. Some of them are his friends, and so that's where he gets sucked in. It's not a good movie, but it's interesting to the point of, you know, there's some levels of mind control. But also it represents the conspiracy theorists of that time in the 70s. Back in the 70s, you know, back in the 60s and the 70s, the people who were conspiracy theorists were the liberals and the Democrats, right? The Republicans and the establishment, they had Republican president and the, you know, the old guard, they were the ones who were squishing down and were pushing back against conspiracies. The, you know, the right-wing Democrats, the, the central Democrats, the establishment Democrats, and certainly the Republicans were all pushing back against these so-called conspiracies, right? Conspiracies, conspiracies about JFK's murder being, you know, more than just a, a single lone government. Bobby Kennedy's murder, Martin Luther King's murder, right? All these things that they were part of a larger, larger conspiracy, right? J. Edgar Hoover, all these people that were right-wing people, very right-wing, very conservative, and. The people who are saying there's conspiracies and there's a, you know, hidden government, shadow government, corporate conspiracies, Ralph Nader and Gloria Steinem and all these people, right? Gloria Steinem was actually working for the CIA, but they were coming out, all these hippies and, you know, all these people, all these conspiracies and the, you know, the so-called the man, right? The man, the, the man, you know, the, the concept of the man being in control. And so there was this level of thinking conspiracy theorist, being a conspiracy theorist, was coming from the liberal community. Some extent from, you know, ex-vets like my brother who are in Vietnam, who might have been Republican or more, you know, more on the right. But most of the conspiracy theory stuff was on the left, right? And they dealt with it in a different way, but the same way, to say that you're crazy. And now all those people are in power, the, you know, the generation of the 60s, that grew up in the hippie era, the generation of the 70s, right? The generation before mine, the baby boomers, and then, you know, to some extent, the generation Xers who are in my age bracket are the ones with power and control. People in their 50s and 60s and 70s are now in charge of these corporations. And the people that, you know, younger people that are with them on the left 
And they're the ones who are calling anybody who's coming up with a conspiracy theory as crazy, right? Now, they're the ones who are oppressing conspiracy theories and conspiracy theorists. It's completely flipped. And now you're a right-wing conspiracy theorist. You know, the power dynamic has shifted and all of it's shifted and it's reversed itself. But the outcome's the same, right? You know, at the end of the movie, they, they kill the Warren Beatty character. And then after there's another assassination and they blame the assassination on him, right? And so you see that there's, you know, a, like, a, you know, conspiracy here, but it just comes out and the commission comes out and they say, oh, it's just one lone, lone crazy, disgruntled person. And so, um, you know, like I said, it wasn't a great movie, but, you know, what I saw in it was how back in those days it documented where the conspiracy theory movies were coming from, and they were coming from the left. And there was this authority, like that's what the authority does, that they come out and they say, no, all your beliefs are, you know, all these theories are wrong. And this is what's happened. You know, in the medical community, in terms of the you-know-what, you know, all the people that didn't like the you-know-what before the you-know-what, right? Before COVID, you know, before the COVID you-know-what, you know, you know <laughs> the, the, um, the people that were against it, were on the left, right? The people who were, you know, taking herbs and taking more natural medication and things like this. And so what you see is they're calling all the people on the right, which is bizarre because it's being pushed by the left, and the left-leaning people who like alternative medicine, many of them don't go to traditional doctors. I mean, all these people in Hollywood, and they're eating, you know, vague vegan food and healthy foods and vegetarian foods and organic foods and they're doing all these things. They don't believe in the food system. They don't believe in the medical system to the most, you know, unless they're getting plastic surgery or getting butt implants. But they have, a, you know, special dietitians. They don't eat the food that other people, they know it's all poison, right? And they're the ones pushing, you know, something that should be highly controversial, right? And that's how everything's flipped, where they're now saying, you know, all the conspiracy theorists, all the crazy conspiracy theorists are coming from the right. And, you know, the... QBs and the right-wing people in the truth community have done this also. They, it's a self-inflicted wound, and it has caused, you know, uh, suppression of information, right? To demonize and make crazy, you know, like Kanye. Kanye is a good example of this. To make someone the identified patient, the crazy one, you know, the identified patient in the family is the scapegoat, right? The person that's going to act out all the dysfunction in the family, I mean, you could say that's happening with me in the heartfulness system right now, where I'm, you know, to me, a voice of reason, but everyone else in the system is, you know, going along with, um, you know, stuff that's just wrong, right? But it's easy to say, all right, this guy's the problem, and to, you know, silence me and not listen to me in the, you know, whatever it is. I've been in this situation myself, right? And, you know, to do with my acts and her demonization of me. And so, like, this is, what happens? You become the identified patient. It's just so much easier for everyone to say, you know, this person is, you know, this is how it is when you call out a dysfunctional system and when you, you know, shed the light on and you might not be the best person. You're not going to be the best person. You're going to have issues yourself that they can easily target and say, look at you, look at you. This is what's wrong with you because it's never the system's fault. And that's what I said in you know, working as a, you know, I have a master's degree in counseling and there's the DSM-5, it used to be the DSM-4, and it's filled with thousands of diagnoses and psychological conditions. And you know what's missing from the whole book? Any blame on the system, right? It's you as a person that screwed up. The system is great, even though it causes, you know, everybody can be diagnosed with something. You have 100% psychological impairment, psychological issues in our society. Everyone's a little bit crazy, right? But the system is great, you know, <laughs> because you can't criticize the system because once you look at the system, you'd be like, oh my God, the system's effed. It's the system, you know, it's the system's fault. You know, I got some more stuff to get to in a, in a moment here. But, you know, this is a very important thing to understand that anybody who's, you know, saying the system is flawed right now when the system is so fragile and on the ropes and it's it's collapsing morally and I mean human beings are collapsing left and right. We'll get into that 
uh, across the board, physically, psychologically. I mean, it's something where our system is coming unraveled, just like a pair of Kim Kardashian's jeans. And, <laughs> and you know, anybody calling out the system is a threat right now because the system's vulnerable as they try to go through some sort of, you know, Hail Mary reboot or reset that isn't going to work. Like, it's over. The yuga's changing, the power dynamic is coming down, and the system's imploding. And anybody who's not, you know going along with the status quo and just mindlessly repeating the mantra that the system is wonderful and great is a threat to it. And that's what's happening now. Like now it's like, you know, it's a real, you're becoming a real threat to the system that's, you know, desperately trying to hang on by its evil, dark, you know, satanic fingernails. It's like, you know, it's, it's a hanging on by the, the devil claws, right? Anyway, so let me get into this other stuff here. Davidson make public debut at the Kardashians premiere. So they had a premiere for this god awful show, right? I mean, they you know they put the show to rest, and it was the last season. I they did some trailers and I made fun of it, and it was pretty horrible. The trailers, like I've never really seen, like I've never seen an episode of the show. I've seen little bits and pieces over the years, but you know they had this you know, some sort of gala here. Here they are. There's her fake silicone bud and Pete, you know, her ghoul, <laughs> holding hands with her ghoul. <laughs> and, you know, they have this um, event. There's another shot of her fake bud. And there's her giving the peace signs and a kiss. She's a poser. Um, that one's a poser. The Kardashians red carpet debut. See what the stars wore to the Hulu premiere. And so... I mean, you know it's going to suck. No one's going to give their honest opinion of this thing. That guy, the mother ghoul for this, um, I don't know who that dude is, and the rest of these dudes. Um, and so, you know, it's just horrible. It's like pretentious. And why is there a premiere for this thing? Why is there interest? I mean, they have a fan base. And whatever their fan base is, maybe a million people, there's, you know, 300 and... Um, whatever, 439 million other people <laughs> that don't watch the show and the majority of people don't like them and what they stand for, but they're still out there anyway. They just won't go away. And so, um, yeah, it's just horrible. So it's Bruce Willis pictures. Bruce Willis pictured for the first time since aphasia diagnosis revealed. You know, these celebrities... They're dropping like flies in three ways. Ever since COVID hit, during the lockdown, they were weeping because they didn't have you know their fans and they couldn't do celebrity things anymore. Here's here's a you know a, a JoJo Magoo like Bruce Willis with his favorite buddy here. They're um, it's quite a, a size difference. Um, quite a size difference. This dude's towering over <laughs> over over Bruce, but they're dropping like flies, right? So they were like all psychologically freaking out when the COVID hit because they were locked in and they're still having psychological and drama and scandals. I mean, those things are still taking out some celebrities and I'm sure this is just a, you know, a sort of a, um, a microcosm of the, the bigger, you know, what's going on in the world. And then there's all the, the physical aspects that they're dropping like flies physically and then some of them are dying. And so there's physical issues, there's deaths, and there's psychological issues. And I'm sure that has, you know, everything to do with, um, well, you know what, but all of it, right? It has everything to do with, like, the end of the, the system. And it's, and it's more than just celebrities. Ireland Baldwin says she's been ridden with anxiety from hate comments online. Now, I, you know, of all the Baldwins... When she invoked the I'm a silly goose defense for drinking coffee, which makes her, you know, completely have like a heart attack, uh, panic attacks and things. Um, but like she's still a Baldwin. Right? <laughs> so I don't really know how to so start this. I went I went on live on my Instagram today because honestly, I sort of reached a boiling port point. I'm not, I'm not, I'm on my period. Thanks. I'm angry and tired. 
I felt the need to address these emotions and these fiery feelings within. Now I could have now I could have a publicist that would be highly unnecessary and rather expensive. LOL. Your LOL doesn't go with being angry and tired. I just could ignore the hundreds of messages I receive, but but by doing so I wouldn't be able to interact with any of you. That's simply not going to work for me. I adore the intimate conversations I have with so many strangers and new friends on here. I couldn't possibly ignore just the hateful ones. Yeah, you could, without letting them affect me. Well, you could. You know, I do. Like, it's you can do it. You just, anything that you see is going in that direction, stop reading and ban the person and move on to something else. And every once in a while, you could, you know, make an example of somebody. <laughs> it works <laughs> effectively well. I am a person, in case you thought otherwise, words hurt no matter how much I pretend like they don't. All right. This is, you know, this is the price you paid for social media. This is her just, um, yeah. This isn't her rant that she went on. I don't know if it's here. The story, long, the story is no longer available. So, so whatever rant she went on has disappeared. But, you know, that's social media. There's haters out there. The world sucks. People suck. And if you're going to be on social media, you're going to get a big dose of it. The Academy split over confiscating Will Smith's Oscar on decision day. So I saw this this morning. I'm like, well, I'll wait until the verdict comes out. And it did before making the rest of this video. Will Smith banned from, from all Academy events for 10 years following Chris Rock's slap. I mean, that's, you know, maybe that means something to him. But I mean, the Board of Governors, <laughs> there's governors, has decided, is, Wh is Whoopi Goldberg a governor, has decided for a period of 10 years from April 8th, 2022, Mr. Smith shall not be permitted to attend any Academy events or programs in person or virtually, including but not limited to the Academy Awards they announced on Friday. He can't go back. And so, <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> that just seems ridiculous to me. Like, it's just arbitrary 10 years, but whatever. Okay, so I saw this... Um, Tom Holland's hairdo, Spider-Man's hairdo is going to change here. This is from Avengers Infinity Wars. A lot of these movies and TV shows are filmed with darkness, right? Where you really can't see very well. You know, it's really annoying. Like, you know, I mean, you got special effects and CGI. And you're going to you make us strain our eyes to see what's going on. Here's the article that came from Marvel fans can't unsee viral blunder in Avengers Affin Infinity War. So Iron Man's talking to him, and his hair looks like this. And he's like, all right, you know, they're having a conversation. And then it goes back to Iron Man, and then it goes back to him. His hair is <laughs> completely different, which just exposed the illusions that movies are. This tweet ruined my day. <laughs> That's all it takes, right? Kind of made me happy. And so that's it for today. Let's end on a good note. <laughs> Infinity Wars has been compromised again. Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paramano definitely reporting from the Apocalypse and the Ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.